Good day children, it's me again, Teacher Wilson, and today we will learn together as I guide you to our lesson entitled Matter and its Properties. If you still remember, what is matter? Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Matter really matters. The food you eat, the clothes you wear, the water we use, and even the books or magazines you read, the gadgets you are using are likewise matter. Air is also considered as matter. You are also a matter, and as such, you matter. Now, let's talk about the properties of matter. Before that, what is the term properties? Properties are the external and internal characteristics of an object. This also guides you in identifying materials based on their appearance, taste, and shape. What about a material? When we say material, it is a substance of which something is made. For example, a chair can be made from materials such as metal and wood. Properties of matter can be classified into physical properties and chemical properties. What is physical properties? Physical properties are characteristics of matter that can be observed or measured without having to change its composition. These include external characteristics such as color, shape, size, and temperature. They also include the characteristics of absorbency, conductivity, flexibility, fluidity, hardness, impermeability, insulation, magnetism, rigidity, solubility, strength, thickness, and transparency. Color refers to combined lightness or darkness, hue, and saturation such as red, green and blue, yellow, brown, and many others. When we say shape, shape is the property that describes the outline of external appearance of an object. Examples are a ball is circle, a box is a square, and a pyramid is triangle. Size. Size describes how big or small an object is. Example, an ant is smaller than a cat. Texture. Texture is the smoothness or roughness of an object. Things may be smooth like silk or rough like a sandpaper. Absorbency. Absorbency is the property of a material that easily allows water to pass through its pores. Paper cloth and cotton are absorbent materials. Conductivity. Conductivity is a material that allows heat and electricity to pass through it. A good conductor, for example, is a copper. Flexibility. Flexibility is the property of a material that is easy to bend. Example are wires. The next one is fluidity. Fluidity is the ability of matter to flow from one space to another. This property of matter enables you to pour water from a pitcher into a drinking glass. Hardness. Hardness is the resistance of an object to bending, scratching, or cutting. Examples are titanium and a diamond. Impermeability. When we say impermeability, it is a material that does not allow water to pass through it, is said to be waterproof or resistant to water. Examples are plastics, rubbers, and metals. 
The next one is insulation. Insulation is the property of a material that does not allow heat and electricity to pass through it. Example is a wall of a sheep. Magnetism. Magnetism is the property of a material to get attracted to magnets. Example, magnetized metals. Rigidity. When a material is hard to bend. Example is a glass. The next one is solubility. Solubility is the ability of a substance to be dissolved by other substances. The solute is the substance being dissolved, while the solvent is the substance that dissolves the solute. Salt is a very common solute. It easily dissolves in water, which is considered the universal solvent because it can dissolve more substance than other solvents. Strength Strength is the property of a material that is hard to break. Metals such as titanium and steel are strong materials along with rocks. Thickness When we say thickness, it is the width of an object. An object may be thin as a sheet of paper or as thick as a book. And lastly is transparency. Transparency is the ability of matter to allow light to pass through. Matter may be opaque or a material like wood that does not allow light to pass through. A translucent material like a tapis shell allows only a small amount of light to pass through it. And a transparent material like a clear glass allows light to pass through it. Now, let's talk about chemical properties. When we see chemical properties, these refer to the internal composition of matter and include such characteristics as flammability and reactivity. Flammability is the ability of an object to get burned by fire or other strong chemicals. Wood is an example of a flammable material. When a piece of wood is burned, a chemical change takes place as the wood's original composition is altered and the wood is transformed into another form such as charcoal. Reactivity Reactivity is the ability of matter to change in composition as manifested by changes in its physical properties such as its color and form. The nail becomes rusty when it comes in contact with air and water. When the iron in the nail reacts with air and water, a chemical change takes place and the appearance of the nail becomes different from its original appearance. Now, let's talk about distinguishing between useful and harmful materials. A material's properties can help you determine if the object is useful or harmful. Knowing about these properties can help you handle the material correctly. What are useful materials? Among the materials that are very useful to people are metals, plastics, wood, and textiles. Metal is a strong, hard, and shiny material that can be formed into different shapes and an excellent conductor of heat and electricity. It is commonly used to make coins, kitchenware, containers, dinnerware, car parts, and wires. Plastic is a material that is made from various chemicals such as water containers, kitchenware, toys, and many more. Wood is a material that is produced from the roots and trunks of trees. It is hard, flexible, and long-lasting, and these qualities make wood an all-round material and commonly used as furniture, construction materials, musical instruments, 
and even houses. That style is made from either natural or human-made fibers that have been woven together and are used to make a variety of items such as clothes, bags, carpets, and rugs, curtains, and many more. Some textiles, like silk and cotton, are produced from natural sources. However, most textiles are made from a combination of human-made materials such as nylon and polyester. Now, let's have harmful materials. Some materials that people use every day can be harmful when they are used improperly. Some of these can cause injuries. Others can be corrosive, flammable, or explosive, poisonous, or reactive. For instance, plastics, glasses, and metals can be formed into sharp and pointed shapes. Examples of these are pairs of scissors, knives, and similar tools. Corrosive materials. Corrosive materials can damage or destroy the outer layer of other materials. Muriatic acid is a corrosive material that is very useful in removing stains from tiles. However, when applied in metals, it corrodes the metals. Flammable materials. Flammable materials can easily catch fire when exposed to heat. Liquids that are commonly used as fuel, gasoline, kerosene, and lamp alcohol are high flammable. Explosive materials. Explosive materials are those substances that contain a lot of energy. When these materials are exposed to heat or pressure, they release too much energy in the form of light, heat, or sound. Nitroglycerin, a liquid that is used to make bombs, is one example of an explosive material. The earliest form of explosive materials is gunpowder, which is comprised of sulfur and charcoal. Poisonous or toxic materials can cause sickness or death when they are swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. For instance, some materials can cause contamination and be harmful to humans and wildlife when disposed improperly. They usually give off overpowering and irritating smells. They include mothballs or chemical pesticides that are formed into small balls and are placed inside cabinets to prevent certain types of moths and other insects from destroying clothes and similar items. Reactive materials. Reactive materials cause a chemical reaction when they are mixed with other substances. The chemical reaction produces heat. Too much reaction of the materials leads to overproduction of heat, which in turn causes burns. For instance, the reaction when you mix baking soda with vinegar will cause bubbling and fizzing, both of which are indicators of a chemical reaction. When these occur, the chemicals in the mixture can be forcefully ejected and get into your eyes and can cause irritation. That's the end of our lesson for today. I hope you've learned a lot of things. See you next time. Bye!